Professor Gerhard Wiernsberger is working as a consultant at Medical University of Graz. He's an outstanding expert for nephrology and old age, and he's one of the primary investigators of the SCOPE project. He's today with us and he is able to explain to us what, a, what is the impact of physiological aging changes of the kidney on daily clinical practice when working with older people with chronic kidney disease. Professor Wiensberger, welcome to this learning course. Would you be so kind to share with us as an expert how to deal with older people in daily clinical practice with chronic kidney disease and how physiological changes in kidney function impact the daily clinical practice when working with older people? Thank you so much. First, let me tell you that from the epidemiological data in scientific literature we know that humans on average tend to lose renal capacity from age 40 years and older. It may be expected that we lose 10% of kidney capacity per decade of life from this age on. These changes are reflected uh, by reduced capacity of the kidneys to filter substance from blood into the glomeruli. These changes may be measured when drawing blood via a diminished glomerular filtration rate also called GFR. The technical diagnostic pathways how to determine kidney function in daily clinical practice will be presented in Moto 2 of this MOOC. The use capacity of the kidneys during physiological aging impacts the balance of water and electrolyte metabolism in the human body. As the aging kidney is not able to sufficiently reabsorb uh, sodium, older people tend to lose water as sodium picks up water due to osmotic action. Given the fact that water and electrolyte balance are also regulated by uptake via thirst as demanding factor on one can speculate that uh, aging effects in the kidneys may be neglected. We know that due to neural regulation, everybody gets thirsty during fluid deficit in the human body. The urge to drink fluids is a national instinct neglected, uh, uh, regulated by negative feedback loop between the brain and other organs in the body like the kidney. In older people, however, the loop sometimes weakens, putting their health dangerously at risk when combined with the aging changes in the kidney. Another age-related change addresses the capacity of aging kidney to concentrate or filter ammonium and hydrogen ions. This leads to a diminished capacity to keep up a solid acid-base balance in the aging human body with severe consequences on many metabolic reactions in the human body. Within the kidney, low-grade acidosis leads to increased excretion of calcium ions and an increased tendency to develop kidney stones. The loss of calcium, a substance that is intensely needed for bone formation and dysfunction, also uh, facilitates the development of osteoporosis and predisposes older people to fractures following fall events. This clinical pathway is further supported by the fact that low-grade acidosis associated with kidney changes during aging strongly impacts protein metabolism and muscle function. As may be seen from the graph, I have brought with me and I want to share it with you. Low-grade acidosis leads uh, to a state of chronic inflammation and disturbed metabolism triggered by hormone insulin. In fact, the receptors by insulin are not reacting as expected from the physiological ranges we call the status insulin resistance. This leads to decreased muscle protein synthesis 
and decreased synthesis of another protein responsible for transport of many substances in the human body named albumin. As a consequence, the human body is not able to reshape muscle as expected and older people tend to lose physical function capacity as reflected in body stability and the tendency to fall. We call the status of loss of muscle during the normal physiological aging process sarcopenia. The word sarcopenia originates from the Greek where sax, that means meat, and penia from poverty. Given the relation of aging processes as outlined in the model of this MOOC with kidney function is understandable, with kidney seems to play a central role in the aging mechanism and for the maintenance of physical function capacity during aging. Thank you, Professor, for this interesting explanation that makes clear how the physiological aging process impacts uh, the daily life of older people suffering from chronic kidney disease. Did I get you right or can I understand you right saying that it's very important to protect functionality and to protect kidney function to maintain independence and to age healthy as we understand it together with chronic kidney disease? Yes, this is true. Kidneys may age accelerated if under favorable conditions. Can you briefly share with us uh, which factors explicitly uh, may be addressed to protect the kidneys and to diminish accelerated kidney aging? Yes, we nowadays know that gender affects kidney aging negatively. It could be demonstrated in large epidermal studies such as the Enhanced study that men tend to lose kidney capacity to a high extent than women. Let me express this in different words. Due to hormonal predisposition with higher uh, androgen levels, the probability to exhibit excellent kidney aging processes increases. Smoking further increases the risk for increasing oxidative stress, as explained in the first part of this model. Disturbances in metabolism, especially when infecting insulin me uh, metabolism, also favor the development of premature kidney aging. We nowadays uh, know that obesity, especially visceral obesity, which supports the development of insulin resistance, predisposes people not only to develop diabetes, but also advances kidney aging. This is a very interesting aspect, and that would lead me to another question, if you allow. Can you probably briefly explain to us how different diseases impact the aging process of the kidney? This topic will be of relevance in Model 3 of this MOOC, when diseases and multimorbidity and their impact and relation to kidney aging will be discussed. However, let me answer your question on a more, more uh, macromolecular level. Cardiovascular diseases such as arterial hypertension, arteriosclerosis and cardiac insufficiency negatively impact kidney function in a reciprocal way. We know that heart and kidney are pathophysiological linked to each other during lifespan. Reduced organ capacity of either one negatively impacts the function of the other. <clears throat> this implies that uh, modern medical management of older people implies a more holistic and multi-organ approach. As I've tried uh, to explain, Many organ functions are affected by reduced kidney capacity during aging. Bones, muscles, the kidney stem cells, but also organs like the vessels, the heart may be negatively influenced by reduced kidney functioning. So what I understand from your words, it's important to have a look on a cardiovascular diseases and it's also important with patients suffering from chronic kidney disease in old age to have a view on the muscles and the bones and to tailor a quite holistic 
a care program for these patients. But if I got you right, if I do that, I have the option to de-stress the kidney. Could you briefly share with us what de-stressing of the kidney in old age means? Yes, intervention that have proven uh, effective for successful agents so far, such as balanced nutrition and exercise, seem to be favorable also for kidney aging. Of course, genetic predisposition, as explained in this model of the MOOC, may be influenced uh, at the time of being. However, closely monitoring kidney function once diseased is vital, monitoring blood pressure and weight as well, balancing glucose metabolism are also uh, cornerstones of preventive management for older people and will be discussed in the model four of this MOOC. Especially the choice of drugs and curing disease management is a skill of increasing impact in medical management uh, for the future. It will be therefore be discussed uh, more intensively separately during the learning course. Thank you, Professor, for being with us. If I got you right, there is a possibility of de-stressing the kidneys. Of course, there is a genetic predisposure, as discussed in this learning module, but there are factors that may be closely monitored, such as arterial hypertension, cardiovascular diseases, glucose monitoring, and also monitoring the kidney function in old age. Thank you for sharing this information with us. Thank you for inviting me and I wish you a successful course. So there is a lot of things to learn about chronic kidney disease in old age. We still have two courses to go to give you more insight and detailed insight in how to manage older people and how to di diagnose chronic kidney disease in old age. If you're interested, come and join us in course two and three of this MOOC.